Job descriptions are many times the first interaction a potential candidate has with your company. Today we'll talk about how to craft these descriptions to attract the right talent that fits your organization. So here's what we have lined up for you today. We'll start with the fast way of doing it. Not the best approach, but I understand sometimes you need to just get the job done quickly. From there, we'll talk about how to build job descriptions in a more bottom-up way that's customized to your company and incorporates your people. We'll provide some tips on how to structure, format, and how to draft the content. And finally, we'll talk about how to set up a process that includes review and approval, and eventually maintaining these job descriptions and keeping them up to date as your company grows and evolves. I've been there. You need to quickly hire a team and you need to get these job descriptions posted to start hiring right away. Again, this isn't the best approach and candidates will be able to see a rush job, but it's a fast and light approach to get you started. Let's pull up Microsoft Word. You don't need to start from scratch and Word actually has a decent template. So create new from template. In the search area, type job description form and there you go. You've got a template you can start using right away. Let's use this template to talk about the different sections of a job description. This entire top section, let's just call job logistics and identification. This is very basic top level information that's important from an administrative standpoint and includes things like the title, location, and also some internal references for legal, for example, job category and position type, and some that can also be used in the future for reporting, for example, the job code. Now, some of these things may seem really unneeded, especially if you're a small company. Again, this is just a template that you can adapt to your needs. I'll say that as you scale your organization, it will make it a little more smooth down the road if you implement some of these types of documentation sooner than later. For this example, we're going to fill this out for a typical consultant role, and we'll do this for Project Violet. So let's take out a couple of these sections we likely won't use, update the logo, Job category and position type, I'm going to use as how we're classifying different types of workers. Uh, for job category, the options could be employee or contractor, and really depending on your company, you'll likely classify a little differently. For job position, this is typically for us full-time, part-time, hourly, maybe temp, or for you, maybe a seasonal worker. And then I'll just put TBDs as placeholders for now until this goes through the later stages after approval. Okay, so this is the main section of the job description. Again, let's not start from scratch. A good resource to start, especially if you're just doing this first draft and you don't know the role that well, go to the US Labor Department, search for the role in their database and just read through the information they have, which actually includes items that you can pull directly into the job description. Next, do a Google search. Filter for categories that make sense for the role, and then pull in items that you think is relevant. Harmonize the verbiage so it matches across the job description, and we'll talk about this a little more later. And there you go. You've got a draft you can now send to your hiring manager to review, to add to, and then edit as appropriate. So that's the quick approach to get the ball rolling. But if you have time, an engaged team, and a unique culture you want to showcase, Here's another way from that's a bottom-up and more people-centric approach. A great way to craft a unique job description is to really engage your people. One way to do that is to actually carve out deliberate time to discuss these openings and what they mean to your company. This can be done across a few meetings, or I recommend an offsite with the whole company if you're small, or if you're a little larger with a select group of people that truly understand the role and needs in detail. Here's what the offsite agenda can look like. I would say as part of the people team, you should be the facilitator to keep the agenda on track, document the discussion in some form of notes, and then take all that information back to draft those custom job descriptions. As you can see in the agenda, the day is really centered around three working sessions. So let's spend some time talking about these in more detail. 
The first session in the morning is focused on the company summary. You want to be able to describe your unique culture, how you work, and the type of people you want to join your company. Hopefully, the icebreaker has put people in a comfortable and conversational mindset, and you can use questions to help facilitate the discussion. Questions like, what do our company's vision, mission, and values mean to me? What are examples of our team living out our core values? And what makes you proud to work at this company? There are different activities that you can do to drive conversation. You can do more of a, maybe a whiteboarding session where you're writing things down as people bring them up. Or you can pass sticky notes out and have people write down their thoughts and then post them on a board under the different headers. You can even prepare a slide or two to showcase some people in the company that have really shown those values. Here's a template where you can pick two to three people with some specific examples. And these really are just different approaches to get the conversation flowing. In our toolkit, you'll have more questions you can ask in the working session to really hone in on the people and culture aspects of your company. Your job as the facilitator is to keep the discussion flowing and to really capture those themes that bubble up. Keeping in mind, you're going to pull some of these unique items out to showcase in the job description. After that exercise and a short break, we'll move to the second portion of the morning. This will be centered around aligning on what the needs of the organization are. You can divide up this session into three components. Summary of the current state, for this, we recommend having some form of organizational chart or whiteboard it out if you're fairly small. From there, talk about the needs of the organization that have been requested or communicated up to this point. Finally, if time permits, have a discussion about future state needs or types of roles that are evergreen that you're always recruiting for. We created this template for you to use as a reference point throughout the discussion. It's always good to see how the company is laid out and it's a helpful visual tool to keep everyone talking about the same thing. We also included a table to track different employee categories and you can also use this to talk through any DEI initiatives you may be tracking towards. In our toolkit, we have a list of targeted questions to really align on what the needs are and how to dig a little further into relevance and priority. Now the goal coming out of this section is to have a prioritized list of the openings that you'll start discussing in detail in the afternoon. Heading back to the agenda, after lunch and a recap of the morning, you can as a group start discussing the open positions in detail. This is where you can divide into smaller breakout groups with people related to each area or position. As the facilitator, you can bounce around the different groups, but make sure each breakout group has a lead to drive the conversation and take thorough notes on what's being talked about. Here's a template that you can use and provide to the team leads to essentially fill out on their breakout sessions. On the left are questions around getting some perspective on the role and then diving into the responsibilities and qualifications. On the right, it's what we call an impact description. And this is what you hope the person filling this role will accomplish in the first year on the job. This is a really good exercise to do because it's unique information to add to your job description. It gives more insight into expectations and it will also lead to a more solid onboarding for the candidate once they start their role. It's a great way to differentiate yourself from competitors that have the standard job descriptions that read more like HR legal documents. It shows you've really thought about this role and gives the candidate some understanding of what getting up to speed truly looks like at your company. You may want to do some market analysis prior to the offsite and have some of this information ready as a reference. But this job description needs to be custom to your company, and I wouldn't rely on these references heavily during the offsite. After the breakout sessions, I'd recommend bringing everyone back together to regroup and talk about some highlights on the discussions. Talk about next steps, which includes consolidating all this great information that's been recorded in the day, and then drafting those job descriptions, which will then be sent back out to the team for review and additional input. Okay, now that you have all this great information, it's time to take a step at drafting the job description. Here are some tips on how to structure, format, and draft the content in your job descriptions. Let's start with the structure. Similar to the template we used before, there are five general sections you can use. I would recommend keeping this structure and format consistent across all job descriptions. It just makes it easier to edit internally and also for candidates to consume once you have these published on your website and across different job platforms. 
Okay, let's start with title and logistics. For this section, let's keep the role title short, about three to four words at most. Make it as search friendly as possible. So use keywords that candidates will likely search for and avoid abbreviations, acronyms, or cliches like a, a ninja of this or that uh, because people don't typically search for jobs with that verbiage. Next is the company summary. This is something um, that sometimes goes at the end of job descriptions, but we'll just keep it here for now. This is where you'll pull discussion points from that first working session. Keep this part short as well, but convey to candidates what your company does and what makes it unique from its mission, vision, culture, and values. All right, moving to responsibilities. For these next sections, let's stick to five to 10 items per section so we don't overwhelm candidates. List the most important tasks first and be as specific as you can. If you're gonna use bullets, I think action statements are great and start each with a verb. So act as or guide, support, advocate for, partner with, analyze. Keeping that same structure makes it quick and easy to read. Depending on the job, you should list essential and non-essential tasks and make sure it fits your culture. If you think bullets are too rigid, you can consider day in the life descriptions. This can be really effective, but it should be at the same time, very clear and concise as possible. This is the section where you can add those expectations that you came up with in the working sessions so candidates can see what, ex what to expect in that first year as they get up to speed on the job. All right, qualifications. Again, stick to five to 10 items. In this section, you can touch on three areas, including knowledge. So this could be education or experience, skills, anything that's necessary to do the job, and then traits. This is really describing what type of person you're looking for and you think that would fit your culture and operating principles. For the responsibilities and qualifications, you may try using the second person instead of the more formal third person. Using you in these statements feels a lot more personal and helps the reader to really see themselves in these statements. And finally, you have compensation and benefits. Uh, this is more optional and this really depends on how transparent you are within your company. Uh, but something to showcase, especially if you're paying at or near the top of the market. So in general, be clear and concise as possible. And finally, proofread everything. Uh, I would also run this by your legal counsel just to validate that you have all the right legal protections listed as well. For example, adding a statement like additional responsibilities as required or notating how much weight they potentially need to lift. Now, some companies have gone for additional help and hired copywriters to compile the job descriptions. If that's the case, I'd still put together the initial draft and have them edit and approve from there. Here's a high-level process you can use. You may even leverage this as a working document at the end of the offsite or in a kickoff to set expectations, confirm drafting and reviewing responsibilities, and to set potential due dates for each milestone. In general, a kickoff is great to start things off. In this meeting, you'll have the key stakeholders for that specific job description and confirm expectations and timelines. From there, you'll go through iterations of drafting and reviewing with the right people. And once that's complete, you'll have a formal approval that you'll memorialize, start publishing, and later on, conduct ongoing updates. You want everyone to understand how these documents will move through the process and to keep everyone organized. During the drafting and review process, have a location where these drafts will be housed. To keep the versioning secure, I'd recommend having edit access only to the person or people that, have, that are the writers of the job description, but allow stakeholders to view and add comments to that working document. Make sure people understand the naming conventions as well, so they know they're reviewing the right document at different points of the process. Finally, I'd recommend having a single owner of the document, preferably on the people team, and have them act as the quarterback of the process to drive review meetings and be responsible for consolidating edits and incorporating comments in a timely fashion. Make sure that approval is memorialized and stored in a central location. Also, I'd recommend having a version that can be shared to the right teams, or maybe even the entire company, so people can view and see details on current and past job descriptions across the organization. A final point is on the ongoing reviews, the last step in this end-to-end -end process. You don't want your job descriptions to go stale and to refresh them at least on an annual basis. 
A great time to do this is aligned with any type of annual reviews or check-ins with your employees. Put into the agenda that they review the job descriptions for their role and provide feedback on accuracy and any additions they recommend. They'll already be in the mindset of reviewing their own responsibilities and performance and will be able to check if it's aligned with what is being published in these job descriptions. For new hires, ask them to provide feedback throughout the first year to verify their perspective of its accuracy. This is especially important if you include the impact description that we described before. And there you go. That's our video on job descriptions. Don't forget, you can download all these slides and templates by clicking on the toolkits available in the course, uh, which also includes a full job description for our sample consultant role, where you can see an example of all the tips and recommend recommendations we had in this video. If you're part of the HR or people team in your company, we believe your job is incredibly valuable and one of the core components of making your company one of the best places to work. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.